Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Learn With Me. I'm Deborah Hansen, and today we're going to look at the AP Psychology Key Terms for 3.4 Cognitive Development Across the Lifespan. So this is simply the key terms for this section of Unit 3. So I'll give you a definition and a real-life example that can go into your flashcards, into your notebooks, however you decide that you're going to keep track of these key terms. You absolutely must do this for the AP exam. You have to be able to apply all these key terms, so you really do need to find a way that you are going to remember them. So whatever works for you, um, that's, you got to find your way, right? I tell my students, I have many different students who use flashcards and some who have notebooks, some who like the quizlets, whatever works for you, you've got to find that that way. Um, and if you like the content, please hit that subscribe button for me. I really appreciate it. Love seeing the numbers go up and I have been lately, which has been really fun. So thanks so much if you have already done that. And if you haven't, please do that today. That would help me a lot. Okay, let's get started on our key terms. So we are just going to cover the key terms for this section. I've already gone through the uh, essential knowledge and CED question on a separate video. These are the key terms for this section. Let's start with schema. We've seen this word before. You probably already have a flashcard for this. Um, we've seen it in unit one, I believe it was. So let's talk about schema, a mental framework that helps organize and interpret information. An example of schema is a child has a schema for a dog, four legs furry. When they see a cat, they may call it a dog because it fits their schema of a four-legged animal. Through learning, they adjust their schema to differentiate between cats and dogs. Assimilation. It's incorporating new information into existing schemas. So for example, for example, a toddler sees a zebra for the first time and calls it a horse, assimilating the new animal into their existing schema for a horse. Accommodation. This is changing existing schemas to fit new information. The child who thought a zebra was a horse learns that zebras are different animals and creates a new schema for zebras separate from the horse. Object permanence. This is the understanding that objects continue to exist even when they cannot be seen. So an infant who's developed object permanence will search for a toy that is hidden under a blanket because they know it's still there. Egocentrism. In Piaget's pre-operational stage, the inability to see the world from another person's perspective. A young child may assume that everyone sees the world the way they do, so they may stand in front of the TV without realizing they're blocking someone else's view. It's all about them. Cons conservation. Conservation is the understanding that certain properties of objects like volume or number remain the same despite changes in the object's form. So for example, a child who understands conservation will realize that pouring water from a, diff from a wide glass into a tall glass doesn't change the amount of water. Zone of proximal development, the ZPD. So this, this is the definition. Vygotsky's concept of the difference between what a learner can do without help and what they can achieve with guidance. So a child may struggle to solve a puzzle on their own, but with a parent's help, they can complete it, indicating that the, the task was in their ZPD. Scaffolding. A teaching method in which more knowledgeable individuals provide support to learners until they can perform the task independently. So, for example, a teacher gives step-by-step -step guidance on how to solve a math problem, but gradually removes help as the students become more competent. Crystallized intelligence. This is the ability to use knowledge and experience, often related to vocabulary, facts, and skills. For example, a seven-year-old can remember historical events or solve crossword puzzles because crystallized intelligence remains strong throughout their life. Now, the other side is fluid intelligence. This is the ability to think quickly, reason abstractly, and solve problems in novel situations. So, for example, a young adult may easily solve a new logic puzzle or figure out a new game strategy, but as they age, this ability may decline. Dementia. This is a cognitive disorder characterized by a decline in memory, reasoning, and other cognitive abilities. An elderly person with dementia may have trouble remembering names, dates, or how to complete everyday tasks like getting dressed. Theory of mind. This is the ability to understand that others have thoughts, feelings, and perspectives that are different from one's own. 
So for example, a child begins to develop a theory of mind when they understand that their friend may be sad, even though the child feels happy. Okay, let's go through like we normally do. So you're going to pause the video after every word, and you're going to try to say the definition and the example for each one. Check your notes to make sure you have it or try to do it from memory. Schema. Assimilation. Accommodation. Object permanence. Egocentrism. Conservation. Zone of proximal development, the ZPD. Scaffolding. Crystallized intelligence. Fluid intelligence. Dementia. Theory of mind. And that's all the key terms for 3.4. There might be some more, but these are the main important ones that according to the CD, you need to know. So make those flashcards, put them in your notebooks, do whatever you need to do, uh, make quizlets with them, practice them, know them so that you can apply them on test day. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did hit the like button, if you want to leave me a comment, I love seeing the comments and I'm happy to answer any questions if you have any. And that's all for now. So I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.